Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us Professor Ajaz Ahmed to discuss the latest scenario in Syria. Ajaz, the Syrian situation seems to be leading more to a confrontation at least at the international level with Russia and China now having vetoed the resolution. So how do you, even resolution, how do you look at the scenario that is developing right now, particularly the international level? Uh, Prabir, I think we are at a very, very dangerous point where the United States and the NATO powers, in my view, have overcommitted themselves to uh, a regime change. Um, and now they can't ba back off from there. So, so they will do everything that they can for this regime change. Even if they don't have UN sanctions? Even if they don't have UN sanctions. So the question is, what form will that take? The two um, uh, 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 Syrian opposition groups that they have fabricated have now taken the position that a foreign in, that an Arab intervention will not be considered a foreign intervention. So how does that play out? Would Qatar and Saudi Arabia and uh, Libya will invade? Uh, and once they come in, then in order to obtain the peace, um, the, the NATO countries will come and so on. I mean, the, this is a fantasy scenario I'm giving you. But to my mind, that is the real danger uh, situation. So a shift has taken place in the Syrian groups in exile or outside, basically calling for an inter military intervention from outside, which wasn't there o on till then. Only the so groups that are aligned with the United States. One of the things about the opposition groups is that there are about 20 of them uh, who have some kind of uh, prominence that the Americans are trying to talk to and uh, NATO countries are trying to talk to. But inner dissensions among them is so great that when they went to meet uh, Hague, the foreign secretary, the British foreign secretary, they didn't even agree to meet with him together. Hague had to meet with them separately in London. They were, they're all sitting in London, but they will not sit in the same room. So that's how splintered that opposition actually is. And this, this does not, at all, not even count the largest part of the actually secular opposition that is inside the country, which refuses to be a part of this Western intervention part. But these people who are sort of wanting Western patronage can't even sit in the same room. Interestingly, now reports are coming out that already basically intervention has taken place. There's a covert war going on inside Syria. Armed groups are not only operating, they're getting arms as well as people coming from outside. Some Libyan people have, uh, Libyan forces have actually died in uh, these armed attacks and so on. So do you see this as something which is going to be further uh, accelerated after this failure of their UN resolution? May very well be, may very well be. Although, as I, as I said, the problem now for them is that having come to the United, United Nations and having lost it on that um, 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 vote, they, 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 they now don't really have a legal instrumentality to intervene. So stepping up of this covert um, and not so covert um, uh, intervention um, it's, uh, it's, it's really the only option that, that they have got. Um, how far that will succeed, we still don't know. We, what we do know is that the entire Syrian establishment has stood behind the Assad regime. We know that popularity polls taken by a Qatari uh, outfit show that Assad is more popular in Syria today than he was a year ago. Uh, some 86% of the population is saying there should be no foreign intervention of any kind and the Arab League's um, uh, economic sanctions uh, against Syria must be lifted. So there is a kind of a coalescing both of the establishment and the vast majority of the population behind uh, Syria, uh, be behind the regime. 
what they are going to do in this situation is very, very hard to tell. However, it seems to me that A, what I said, that it's very difficult for them to step back having gone as far as they have gone. But this is the first chapter of the war on Iran. Of course, this is really uh -huh. connected and we'll come so, back to that. So if you if you are going to step back on Syria now, then how do you de-escalate the entire project of uh, containment you know, of Iran? Yes, yes. Coming the, to this other issue that you were saying, the overstep, what explains this overstepping going to the United Nations when they did not have Russia with them? And particularly after, in fact, having confronted Russia on the issue of this anti-ballistic missile uh, treaty, which they're really breaking, setting up missile shields and so on. Don't you think it was rather uh, in infantile on their part to do this without having Russia on board? The United States simply does not know how to retreat gracefully as a global power. It does no longer see that there are power configurations in the world now that it cannot push around the way that, that it could. Five years ago, China and Russia were not as powerful as they are now. They are not as strong as they are now. So they are doing this kind of thing which, you know, takes your breath away. Uh, before, I mean, one is knowing that Russia was, uh, was going to veto it and uh, China was going to veto it, knowing it. They went in for that veto. It's really quite extraordinary. That's that a very important issue that the report that the Arab mission gave was very different from what the Arab League moved as a resolution after the report. Absolutely. And in fact, the report Absolutely. wasn't made public at that time. It was not made public. It appeared as, uh, it had to appear as an annexure to the resolution because uh, after all, if that is the basis, then you have to put it out there. But the... Qataris refuse to allow the, the report to be translated into English. And did not allow the head of the mission to come as a delegate that's of right. Arab League into that's the United right. Nations right. Security that's Council right. discussions. That's right. But not even a translation. Um, because the, the Arab League's mission actually corroborates everything that the Syrian government has been saying and which the Russian media independently has been uh, documenting. You know? So if that is the, the case, then what kind of resolution is this? You know, let, let, me, let me read to you an, uh, an extract from this report. It says, in Homs and Dera, the two major cities where Syrian army is supposed to have carried out these massacres, in Homs and Dera, the mission observed armed groups committing acts of violence against government forces, resulting in death and injury among their ranks. In certain situations, government forces responded to attack against their personnel with force. The observers noted that some of the armed groups were using flares and armor-piercing projectiles. In homes, Idlib and Hama, the three centers of the power of the Ikhwan al-Muslimin, of the Muslim Brotherhood, where all of these demonstrations are taking place. The observer mission witnessed acts of violence being committed against government forces and civilians that resulted in deaths and injuries. Examples of those acts include the bombing of a civilian bus, killing eight persons in, and injuring others, including women and children, and the bombing of a train carrying diesel oil. A fuel pipe, pipeline and some small bridges were also bombed. The report speaks, and I can go on and on with this, but there's a lot of detail in it. The report very interestingly speaks of there being an armed entity inside Syria, which is carrying out all this. Now, also it, said it is not included in the protocol with which they had come. That's right, that's right, that, that, that the violence by this that, that the protocol was only to check out on what the, the, the government was doing. Be because only Syrian uh, government is supposed to have been carrying out all the violence. And then they see it there um, on, on the ground and document it. 
The interesting part, to, to me, this is very interesting, this armed entity. What is this armed entity? This is not the free Syrian officers, so-called, who are sitting in Turkey. Uh, this near is armed, you know, near <laughs> you know, uh, This is an armed entity inside. And it is an entity, it is not armed groups. Yes, that's you know, inter interesting. So, so the phrasing is to me very intriguing that there is in fact an organized entity, which is not just the small uh, groups running around, this is actually an entity which is making, which is sending out these groups to do all that. Uh, once you have got this report and then you read the text of the resolution, in the entire resolution, at the, towards the end of the resolution, there are about nine demands. All of them are demands on Hafiz al on Bashar al Assad, on the government of Syria, demanding that he step down and hand over power to his vice president. All the demands are, 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 are addressed to them. And not nothing about any of this. In fact, that was the Russian amendment. The Russian right. amendments, if you look at it, are very clear. They said also armed groups have to give up attacks on the state, outside people have to stop supporting these armed groups, etc., which was found unacceptable uh, by the United States. Yeah. You know, the other import, very important, I think, point in the mission statement is in 23 days, which is all they had on the ground, they actually said we could get people to disengage, we could bring some part, partial normalcy, people were actually going towards a peace uh, position and also said that if we are given more time, if our mission is allowed to continue, we think we can bring back normalcy in Syria, which was not allowed by the Arab League. The mission report clearly says that the Syrian government helped them to the maximum degree to go wherever they wanted to go, talk to anybody they wanted, whether the, the, the people were for the government or against the government and so on, uh, that, that, that they had maximum cooperation from, from Syria um, uh, and maximum freedom of movement. So they could observe, they could say, uh, we did, we did. Uh, secondly, they say that in all these three cities, they, the citizens there, who even talked about the 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 the, the, the violence uh, from even from the side of the state, all of them said, "All we want is peace. Uh, I want we want uh, violence to end from both sides." The mission statement says absolutely clearly. And thirdly, the mission st statement time and again says. The media outlets have been exaggerating and fabricating exactly what, uh, what we have all been saying. Gross distortions. You know? And this is, you know, one of the demands of, of, of the Syrian government is that Qatar, that Qatar and Saudi Arabia put some sort of, uh, you know, uh, protocol on what Al Jazeera and Al Arabiya, the two channels that they own, have been doing. You know, interestingly, Ijaz, the international media and of course the Qatari and uh, Saudi media did not report the mission report. That's absolutely, also interesting. Absolutely. That's been one of the things For, that's been blacked out. Uh, precisely. That, that, that is the other side of it. That on the one side, even the Human Rights Commission, uh, mission, uh, Commission of the um, uh, of the United Nations, if you if you look at the report of the Human Rights Commission of the United Nations, the entire thing is based on uh, claims made by uh, the opposition uh, forces, and primarily by this thing called uh, Syrian Human Rights Observatory, which, which is London based, which is which is London based, which we now know from Washington Post, we know that it has been given, it, it has been funded from a Dubai-based uh, um, <coughs> entity which has received $6 million from the United States. So it, it's American money 
And, and this is an, 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 an incredible organization. It's not registered as anything. In the, it has no office. It has no personnel. Um, and um, Al Jazeera actually does the communications for it. Um, this, this also now has come out that uh, all their communications things is being uh, set up on Al Jazeera. And Al Jazeera has a blog by the person who runs that thing. And the blog runs 24 hours. And, and all this information that you see in the world media, in the uh, human rights industry, um, comes from, the, from places like this. But when a mission of the Arab League actually lays it out, it gets blocked. Coming back to the earlier issue that you raised against Iran, there is no question that this seems to be a part of a larger containment of Iran project both in Lebanon and in Syria. This is really a part of that process. So what do you think is the larger containment of Iran project going to happen in this context? The least that the Americans want in Syria, or uh, what uh, the NATO countries together want in Syria, is a regime change in which they will have, they want to have some, someone like Burhan Ghailoun uh, to be the next head of the state, and Burhan Ghailoun has gone, uh, the, 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 the chairperson of the uh, Syrian National Council, the opposition group that the West is backing. Um, he has given an interview to the Wall Street Journal in which he has said that uh, when we come to power, the alliance with Iran will be broken. Hezbollah will not be what uh, uh, it is now. And we will have the most liberal pro-Western regime in the Arab world. You've also said that vis-a-vis -vis Israel, we'll only have peaceful <coughs> negotiations. And, and we on will the have question only, Golan Heights. Um, which essentially means conceding the, 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 the Jordan. Uh, <clears throat> this, is, this is what they would like to have. So Syria is also tied up with Hezbollah. It is tied up with Hamas. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's the whole package. Now, how much of it they will get? We don't know. Um, the risks are so great that Hamas is largely, at the moment, leaving Syria and lo relocating themselves some somewhere else if they can. Where it is not very clear to me yet, but uh, it, this has become tricky for them. Just where all of this is also going. because section of the Muslim Brotherhood. And if you look at it, Tunisia. You look at Egypt and look at Turkey. All three of them have now very strong Muslim Brotherhood uh, presence as and, well as and, Libya. And, and what they, I mean, if you see uh, the Syrian uh, National Council is an amazing um, con contraption. There are these exile academics from Paris and Belgium and so on. And there are the, the top uh, Muslim Brotherhood people, uh, top Syrian Muslim Brotherhood personnel in it. Um, in, in the top leadership. So it, so it is that kind of an alliance, highly pro-Western um, intellectuals of that kind who have no roots inside Syria, uh, some, something like Chalabi or something like uh, in the case of Iran, uh, plus the Muslim Brotherhood. So yes, that is what uh, they would uh, So it's like a very have. interesting alliance. You have Muslim Brotherhood, Saudi Arabia and uh, the Gulf states, Qatar, Turkey, and what Turkey being also a part of Turkey, the larger yeah, uh, Islamic yeah, yeah. Uh, Muslim The biggest intervention in will, be, will be coming from Turkey. Turkey. It's coming from Turkey. Yes. It's coming from So it's a basically uh, an Turkey. interesting alliance of actually Muslim Brotherhood Islamist forces, including Turkey, yeah. the monarchies, yeah. Yeah. who now all have become yeah. supporters of democracy, yeah. and of course the yeah. NATO powers. Yeah. That's, That's what we are seeing vis-a-vis yeah. -vis Iran. And it also tells you something about moderate Islam in general, that Muslim Brotherhood is no less a pliable instrument for the, for the West than the monarchies and these Turkish Islamists. These are NATO's Islamists, a strong commitment to NATO and strong commitment to uh, this kind of inter uh, regime change in Syria. Ajaz, isn't it an irony of the situation that the monarchs in West Asia are today supposedly bringing democracy to Syria? Absolutely, 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 yes. 
Yes, uh, you but have this medieval monarchs running yeah. completely undemocratic, autocratic, authoritarian, call it whatever name yeah, you will, yeah, and yeah. then they are suddenly championing the democracy and human yeah, rights but, in Syria. But listen, I mean, uh, to be fair to the monarchs, th th it's not much more ridiculous than you, the idea that imperialism will bring you democracy. That's true. <laughs> you, you Colon <laughs> colonialism and ex-colonialism bring <laughs> and, democracy. And, and Americans will give you democracy and all of these people. No genuine democratic nationalist movement in the world has ever asked for an imperialist intervention. In this, what is being thrown is this Shia-Sunni divide. And this is being aided by the Sunni monarchs in that sense. I mean, I think their religion is only just a fig leaf for what their other policies are. But this can really break the West Asian countries apart if this is this really spreads. In a certain sense, in a certain sense, but look, I mean, except for the really sort of Wahhabi Salafist kinds of people, the Shia Sunni business really isn't, I mean, it, it is, uh, uh, isn't very deep uh, except for them. It still is something dangerous to be playing this card it, in the Middle it East. Is a, it is a degeneration and a degradation of politics in general in the region. This is something that has emerged within the last 30 to 35 years after the defeat of the Arab Secular National Project. So with this, it does appear that Bashad is holding right now, Bashar al-Assad is holding right now, and if this violence continues, he may even gain more ground. Well, it depends uh, how far it goes. It depends how far it goes. Uh, um, uh, I mean, I go back to the question that you had, uh, where we began, that now that the Americans have gone to the Security Council, failed to do this, they might actually take the position that we tried to go the international law route, uh, but uh, the, the Russians and the Chinese just don't allow us to act legally, so we are going to have to act extra legally. I mean, uh, this issue of extra legality did not prevent them from going into Iraq. Uh, you know, Lavrov, the, uh, the uh, Russian uh, foreign, foreign minister. minister, has said, but of course, uh, if there is a will to invade, we cannot prevent it. So it's not as if uh, as if the Soviet Union, I mean, uh, as if Russia and China are going to come and fight in Syria against them. They won't give them that resolution. But if they want to go ahead anyway, as they did in Iraq, there's nothing to stop them. So we really have to wait and see what happens. Thank you, Ajaz. We'll news Thank you, will continue to monitor the events and we'll discuss this with you as the time goes on and see what the events develop. Thank <laughs> you.